Also, if you could please remember, uh, take notes, get not sir. Today's second speaker is applying one of the best principles for improvement, that's what he knows. Learning by doing. As he works his way through pathways on a project titled Researching and Presenting, please welcome to the lectern Toastmaster James Ray. Fellow Toastmasters, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As I focused on this project, research and presentation, I couldn't help but think about the earlier days in college. I had my professor on my shoulder saying, James, be careful about the sources that you cite. Truth matters. So I wanted to be sure that I gave you credible information, and I also thought about the various methods of research available, but more importantly, I wanted to focus on the topic. I wanted something that was relevant to what we do here at Toastmasters, and also something that I hope you find at least somewhat informative. I have a close friend, at present he's going through a very, very difficult personal struggle. And in an earlier speech, I shared my philosophy on adversity with this group. Of course you're doing well when everything in your life is going well. Certainly you're great when everything is great. But throw a little adversity into the mix and the true character will shine through. With those things in mind, I decided to do my research on a 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR. No matter what you think about his politics, he certainly demonstrated strength through adversity. There is no doubt also that he was an accomplished speaker. In fact, he was such an effective communicator during some of the most challenging of times Many Americans can still quote his words today. To demonstrate, I'm going to ask for help from all of you as I begin one portion of a famous quote. I'll ask you to finish the rest. The only thing we have to fear here is ourselves. Exactly right. And as I share my research, I'm going to talk about not only the good, but also the bad. Now, there are three points that I'd like to address. The first is his struggle with polio when he was first attacked. Second is the Great Depression, and then lastly, Pearl Harbor. We'll begin in 1921. FDR is 39 years of age, and he's vacationing in Canada. He starts to feel aches and pains, gets a fever, symptoms that are pretty synonymous with the flu or today COVID. He goes to two separate doctors and both misdiagnose the man. When he continues to have problems, he goes to a specialist and they tell him, regrettably, you have a disease that will end in total paralysis of both of your legs. I ask you friends not to feel sorry for him. Not at all. According to a quote by his wife, Eleanor, Polio was a turning point that proved a blessing in disguise, for it gave him strength and courage he had not had before. Ladies and gentlemen, FDR learned strength through adversity. That being said, we're going to move to the Great Depression. It is a time that he will draw upon the strength that he learned pushing through the adversity of polio. And he assumes office at the depth of the Great Depression. It is the time when our country needs strength. That's when he spoke those impactful words that we all recited earlier during his, inaug his inaugural uh, address. The confidence and self-assurance that that man had himself was transferred to the American people. Ladies and gentlemen, that mattered. During his presidency, he enacted New Deal programs that created jobs and stimulated the economy. He provided much needed relief to the agricultural sector. And during his second New Deal program, he created social security in order to further improve society. Even through the depths of the Great Depression, he showed strength through adversity. Now in the midst of all these challenges, most of the European continent was at war. 
Although FDR wanted to help, the American people were fed up with bloodshed. Following World War I, they'd had enough. So he found ways to help Britain without putting soldiers in the battle until, of course, December of 1941. One of the most devastating times in our nation's history when Pearl Harbor was egregiously attacked. All of you likely remember words from a second famous speech. The very following day, he addressed Congress and said, December 7th, 1941. A day that will live in infamy. Perfect. So his strength and leadership brought an entire nation to its feet. Now all those good things said, we're going to tap into some of the bad. This will not be a panegyric speech. We have gone through the sweet. Let's dip into the, some of the sour. He expanded the size and the authority of the federal government to a degree not, previous, to a degree not previously known. He diminished states' rights. That's not good. He took us off the gold standard and allowed deficits in the budget. According to a 1935 U.S. Supreme Court ruling, Schechter v. the U.S., the court declared that the National Recovery Act was unconstitutional. They argued the act gave too much power to the president and it was an attempt to control interstate commerce. Possibly the worst, certainly the worst blemish to FDR's name is the fact that he attempted to increase the Supreme Court by six justices. Anything sound familiar about that to us? <laughs> Not at all. One of the conservatives on the bench partnered with others and they disagreed with some of his New Deal legislation. He didn't like that. He decided to change the rules of the game because he wasn't winning. Ladies and gentlemen, not good. So as you can all see, by no stretch of the imagination was FDR a perfect person. But let's be honest, none of us are. Personally speaking, I do not like his politics. But with all of those faults in mind, I most certainly admire, admire FDR's ability to bring us together as he found strength through adversity. I do hope that you learned a little bit, and I hope that you too find ways in your life to find strength through adversity.